Good evening. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up for this Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. We're at 6 p.m. I want to thank all of you that attended the webinar today. Uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of great questions. We covered a lot of stocks and spiders, so that was very good information. Uh, at least you were throwing at me in the right timeliness, and uh, we're getting a good crowd in there. I'm not going to be doing one this coming week, however, because I'm going to take off next week. I'm not going to be in my studio, so you'll just hear a notice from me, hey, I'm on vacation until a week from Monday. So I'm not here this coming Monday. I'll be back the following Monday. I hope you miss me. In the meantime, we had a pretty full day today. If you watch what went on, the uh, Fed chair spoke on Capitol Hill. He has another day of it tomorrow. Today was before the House Committee, and they did a fine job of asking all the questions I think that needed to be asked about inflation, home prices, labor. Is inflation going to stick? What do they see? Is the, what numbers are the Fed concerned about? And the Fed chair did great. He couldn't answer all the questions, not because he didn't want to. You're coming in a post-pandemic. You know, what works? Who the heck knows? But he did make it clear that even with the hot numbers of CPI and PPI that we got yesterday and today, they think it's transitory. They don't think it's gonna last. You may have several months of those hot numbers, but in the end, they look for them to pull back. I'm in that camp with them. And the reason is, I don't think that you're gonna keep up used car prices. We've already seen lumber coming down. We've seen food prices, while they're up right now, they're building the herds already. High prices attract more production. You do understand that. It's the law of economics. You make something scarce enough and people want it, well, you're gonna produce more of it and that's what you end up doing. It's just like US oil. Uh, I was just reading the EIA said we're now pumping 100,000 barrels or more a month than we did the prior month. Why? It doesn't take much when you're up to $70, $75 a barrel to say to the independent producers, I don't care what the, the big boys want to do if they want to return money to everybody, they don't own all the oil. Those other guys are producing. They're making money. And that's what you do in business. You're trying to make money. I think that's it. Unless you're a not-for-profit organization, you still want to break even though. Okay, so in looking at that, I think the Fed gave the green light on inflation. I, I don't think they're gonna fight it. I think they're still very concerned about labor. They're still very concerned about this Delta variant of COVID-19. The Fed thinks that what will take care of high home prices is building more homes. And while the uh, Congress people have other ideas about that, I think that's the solution when you get here. And I think that the costs, like take lumber as an example, uh, it's one of the elements, not all of them, where prices have come crashing down. The price of lumber today is lower than it was in January, and it's more than half, it's declined more than 50% from that peak. So it's lower than we started out the year. From its peak, it's way down as well. And I think you'll see that other costs, once they can get laborers back on the job, some of that will be sticky inflation. But all the labor that we're seeing right now, and the Fed chair said this, these are the lower price jobs coming back in. It's not that high price labor yet, okay? So in looking at this, here's ARC. What do you think of that pattern? Well, I view it as bearish, why? Let me show you. You have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. That is the definition of a downtrend. This line that draws is called a swing line. If you've taken my charting course, you have our charting software, you plot it on them and it gives you an idea of trend and the risk associated with the trend. What do I mean by risk? Well, if you're gonna break this pattern, you gotta get back over 127.40. You're sitting here today at 118.17, you know your risk. That's the number you don't want to take. I am not saying you buy it or sell it. You know the risk to break that pattern. When I put moving averages on, the 18-day average is often when you're under the market, an area you get back up to and you fight a battle, when you're over it down to and you fight a battle. It's the line in the sand. Today you did something very bearish. You got under both the 100-day and you got under the 200-day average and you settled under both. So what's next? Well, one of the numbers right under it is the big number, the Bollinger Band at 117.16. 95% of the time, the market's going to trade within 
Bollinger Bands. It can hit them, it can ride them, but you tell me on this chart how many times you see the market staying out of the band like it did here. Do you think it's, uh, I, I bet that's not even like 1%. <laughs> Wouldn't you take that? No, I, that's about it. 5% though is how the algorithm works. My course, Enhanced Bollinger Bands, teaches you how to use this if you already understand Bollinger Bands. If you don't, you're not going to get it because I'm going to tie in for you momentum, moving averages, and that in that course. And I'll talk about it at the end of this. But to make a long story short, you're oversold, you've sliced through one thing, I'm looking for major support in the market right here, 117.16 to the 118.17 level. And no, I'm not bottom picking, I'm not trying to say go long. This is where I think the pros today began taking off shorts and at the Bollinger Band, I think they're out. Doesn't mean I'm right. I wanted to bring back game stock. Remember it got up here to nearly $340 a share? Well, the stock's 165. Reddit, Reddit, where are you guys? They don't seem to be supporting this at this point. That's all I'm saying. When they move in on something, I'm, I'm very, very uh, attuned to it. I don't want to step in front of them. But they're not there right now. They may come back, but they're not there. So this company was able to sell a lot of stock up here. They have their war chest. Now what are they going to do with it? The bad news for this stock today is what? Netflix said it's going into the gaming business. So you pay attention. That's bearish. But you're under the Bollinger Band. You only stay under it 5% of the time and you're oversold. Could you eventually embed here? Yeah. How many days do you have though? Today was the first day where both numbers that make up the slow stochastic, the K and the D line, are under 20. You got to have two more days of that minimum. In PAVE, you're, you, you see President Biden today met with uh, the different chambers. He's talking to all the Democrats. He, can't even, he went to Capitol Hill. Let's do this. Let's do this. They don't have the votes necessary in the Senate to get it done. And it's the reconciliation part that they're working so hard on. I think they can get a deal probably if they drop that and just went for the infrastructure. That reconciliation, they can talk all they want. They want to get something done to Democrats by the end of July. Why? <laughs> they don't have the votes. It's, it's not going to the House floor. AMC. You can see where it's down. And I, I think people are realizing that streaming number you saw from the Black Widow and you saw from that FX9, those are big numbers. And I don't think that you're going to see the, the distributors want to say to the, um, to the streaming companies, well, we'll keep it in a theater for two weeks. I think when that pop comes with all the advertising, they don't care where it gets bought. I still don't know what to do with movie theaters. There's a death knell there. I can't figure out that business model. Uh, it's three days in a row under the lower band. It's stretched. It's likely to get back into it. Certainly I never tell a client to sell under a Bollinger Band or over one. In the semiconductor, as the market fell back here, I was looking for the support. You're fighting a battle at the 18-day average without doing anything. Uh, and today you stepped out of the trend. Now let me just show you. As of yesterday, what did we have yesterday? You still had lower highs, lower lows. Now if you take out yesterday's high, and it would have to be not yesterday before, 18900, and don't take out today's low, you might start an uptrend. It got up there and right back through it. So anyone that was buying over that, I think they got themselves knocked out right when the market crossed. Uh, back under that number. Big problem for the market. Not looking good to me at all. Podex. market still in trouble. Down to the lower Bollinger Band fully embedded reading. While I think pros are taking money off the table right here, not all of it. That's the enhanced Bollinger Band course. I'll talk about that at the end of this. In ESGU, we have higher lows, higher highs, embedded reading. I think on pullbacks, the market's still being bought. Close that red line, which has a reading of 87.55 under 79, then I'd want out. Barring that is a, a chartist I'm looking and expecting people to buy on the break, still looking for the Bollinger Band is one of the objectives. 
in the energy sector spider. All you had to do, and it was early this morning, is listen to what I was talking about. First thing this morning, I said, there's an agreement between the Saudis, which is basically OPEC as far as I'm concerned, and the UAE. It, yes, it has to be voted on by OPEC plus, but do you want to fight those two large producers? They'll just turn on the spigots. Everybody's going to say yes. And they deserve it, the UAE. They got all that uh, production capability that they've been adding. They've got outside investors. They don't do their money internally. They look for outside investors. Okay, will Russia balk at it and say they want more? Russia always wants to produce more. You know that. I know that. That's all they ever say. I think they have a deal. The emerging market ETF. Okay, what do you do now with this? This gets interesting again. The market for the first time is trying an uptrend since back here, literally from mid-June. If it gets under 79.36, it fails. For the first time, you have higher lows, higher highs. If it has any legs, up you go. Problem, problem, problem. You're already overbought. Don't like what I'm seeing on the chart. Gold, I'm expecting a failure. And I just said I'm expecting inflation. I know what I said. You either got to get an embedded reading or this, in my opinion, stops the market. I think the smart money stepped out of gold up here. The combination of a 200-day average and a Bollinger Band is often a good number. Now, let me show you where it didn't work. Market fell down here, bounced away from it, and then fell apart completely. So this is your retest of what had been an important number. Now it's a resistance number on the way up. Is it going to be cut through? It could. Do I expect it? No. Is the market in a trend? No. It's got a lower low and a higher high and it's overbought. If it were embedded, I'd have a different opinion on the market. In the gold miners, same thing. First challenge of an upper Bollinger Band and a 100-day average, it's where I think the pros step out. The trend is up. Higher lows, higher highs. You've had this trend up ever since you got over, and it was just yesterday, right here, to the 18-day average by one tick, and now I'm looking for the challenge again. Got it, and that's where I think the money, some of it's come out of the market. I'd love to be wrong on that because I, I, I want to be bullish on these metals, but it's just not showing me a clear path. TLT, overbought, trying to correct. The numbers are both under 70, so that has happened. You've got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. What happens if you take out the high of an outside day down from my rule, just mine, within two trading sessions? You didn't do it today. If you do it tomorrow, then I'm going to look for a challenge of the 200-day average. Got it? That's, that would be my guess. If you don't hit it, well, then I think you fall back to the 18-day average. This is not a bearish chart or a bullish chart. You got the swing line down, bias up, and you're working off and just got out of being overbought. The euro, what do you do on the first time you hit a Bollinger Band? So I have that course for you. I look for the bounce. So it's just like, hey, I hit the wall. Whoa, I'm going to turn back on it. So you put it all together. You try to come up with a game plan, and that's what I have. Now, this course will not, I want to make this clear, do you any good if you don't understand Bollinger Bands already. You have to have a working knowledge of them. Once you have that, this is your doctorate level, in my opinion. Why? Because I'm going to carry you in 13 chapters and tie together moving averages, the band, the band's the key here, and my momentum oscillators. And I'm going to show you how I think you can be buying, 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 or selling, 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 taking advantage of when you're hitting that band, popping away from it like we so often see and keep going with it. There'll be an area where there stops. It's all explained. 13 videos, each about seven, eight minutes long. You also get, if you don't have it already, that's why it's qualifying. What's the point of giving it to you if you already have my futures research? And you can swap out, if you're a Spider ETF trader, I'll allow you to swap the futures video for the Spider. Your call if you're not getting it already. Or if you're getting the Spider, why not take the futures and see what it is? Unless you have the combo, then I can't give you anything. Trial to our charting software for the qualifying users who haven't used it in the past year. If you've used it, I can't give you a free trial again. Exchange rules, there's all kinds of things with that. How do you get this? Just go to our website, 
go up to the word education. You'll see the drop down menu. Here's the course. There's a video about it. I explain it in detail. It's not expensive. $75. I don't think that's expensive for 13 videos about seven minutes long to teach you a new trading technique. If you don't like it, well, what did you lose? A penny and a half in the corn market, uh, $75 on a $100 stock uh, that, that moves a dollar. <laughs> you lost pennies, right? I don't think it's going to add up that much. I'm I. Rapstein. You have yourself a good day, and I'll see you all.